Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about radical inhibitors. Inhibitors are species that react with radicals or, or consume radicals. Uh, these are generally things that, that form stable radicals uh, within the context of the radical or the reaction that we're doing. Um, In the biology and biochemistry world, these things are called antioxidants. And in fact, you've probably heard uh, the, the term antioxidant used. But the most common uh, types of inhibitors uh, that are that are we're going to talk about in, in this class are phenolic inhibitors. Uh, and amongst those, uh, the sort of prototypical compounds are BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, and BHA, butylated hydroxyanisole, which is which are phenols, so benzene ring, alcohol with some alkyl groups around them. And the most important, important parts of this are the tert-butyl groups uh, and the OH. And so generally what happens here is if we have some kind of radical that's been generated in an initiation step, like the chlorine radical, it can react with a, a phenolic inhibitor like BHT and produce the BHT, phenol, phenoxy radical, and hydrogen chloride. And this phenoxy radical is, is a stable radical. First, it's got resonance stabilization. And then second, it's got steric hindrance that prevents other kinds of reactions. BHT is added to a lot of commercial plastics kind of products to prevent uh, damage from oxygen and other uh, environmental factors. Uh, similar kinds of compounds actually are used in food. Uh, and so for example, the uh, formula for vitamin E or alpha type tocopherol, uh, which is one for actual one form of vitamin E. Vitamin E looks like this, and uh, an R here, where R is a long uh, hydrocarbon chain, uh, but the main part of vitamin E. A smaller box. It's this phenol, uh, label this E. This phenol in the box is responsible for vitamin E's antioxidant behavior. Uh, vitamin C is another important uh, antioxidant. Vitamin C has an OH group that's resonance stabilized as well. Um, and then there are other antioxidants that are produced by your body uh, to be used intermediary. Another important uh, inhibitor for some kinds of radical reactions, oxygen. Um, oxygen is a tricky mo mo molecule and its peculiar behavior um, leads to us um, is, is sometimes is sometimes sort of glossed over when we first talk about these kinds of compounds in general chemistry. Here is a nice, pretty uh, Lewis structure for oxygen, but it's bad. Uh, and it's bad because oxygen is known to oxygen is known to be a diradical, which means it has unpaired electrons. 
Uh, and so you could draw a slightly different Lewis structure for oxygen, and it's not. Uh, and it's not good either because we also know that oxygen has a double bond. Uh, so here's one of these places where resonance is, uh, I guess, our, our best bet unless we want to talk about molecular orbital theory. Uh, but oxygen is a diradical. There are actually unpaired electrons in molecular oxygen. Now, fortunately, it's relatively stable overall, and it doesn't just go around ripping hydrogens and things off of it. But it can react in the presence of other radicals and shut down whatever radical reaction process that you've got going on. In the next video, we're going to get into homolytic cleavage a little bit more, uh, the process that starts off most radical reactions, and then in the following videos, go through the different types of radical mechanism steps. Thanks for watching.